What up, Rippers? This is Sea Captain, Captain Coots, and I'm here today to present uh, part one of my three-part series. This is the Time Flies, Life Dies, Phoenix Rides PowerPoint project. So the album was released by Cannabis and Bronze Nazareth on May 12th, 2015 on RBC Records. Um, it's available now through iTunes, Amazon, Best Buy, local retailers. So if you haven't picked up uh, a copy already, please do go out and support the album. It's an incredible album. Uh, frankly, it's my favorite cannabis album to date. Um, and if you have uh, picked up a copy already, I'm hoping that this review kind of gives you something else to think about uh, when you're spinning the album. And uh, so uh, without further ado, um, I want to introduce the project a bit more. Um, the perp I want to kind of uh, present uh, a high level review and analysis of the album under three key themes. Uh, the first being Time Flies, um, second being Life Dies, third Phoenix Rise, they're all evident in the title. And uh, if you ask me, I contend that uh, the album is sequenced in such a way to help convey these themes. So this is part one, and so I'll be talking about the, the Time Flies theme, which is uh, tracks one through eight. So the, uh, the, inter sorry, the introduction to Concourse P. Uh, the second part will deal with the Life Dies theme, which is representative through tracks nine through thirteen. Uh, which is the second interlude to uh, um, Give Me Not Control. And then finally, the third theme, Phoenix Rise, um, is kind of evident through tracks 14 through 17, uh, which is Igloo Music to the outro, or Give Me Not Control. And uh, something to keep in mind is when I'm talking about each of these themes, is that each theme, I think, can be studied under, three in, under or in relation to three specific perspectives. So the first being Canvas the MC the second being hip-hop culture, and the third being global events or kind of what's currently going on. So, and uh, I think these perspectives are not just kind of uh, visible or pertinent to uh, studying this album. I think they can you can kind of use them when you're kind of listening to uh, past cannabis' material, and uh, if you're kind of having difficulty kind of uh, understanding or getting the meaning behind some very kind of deep metaphors or obscure references, then I, th I think... Uh, uh, I think when you kind of try to think about it from these different perspectives, you might kind of get a better idea of what's, what's trying to be communicated. So so at this point, uh, you might be asking yourself, uh, why am I doing this? Well, the, the first reason is to kind of build upon the existing reviews and provide a more thorough analysis of the album uh, from a cannabis fan's perspective. Um, to be frank, uh, a lot of the reviews that I've read thus far have been very underwhelming. Um, and uh, if you're one of those reviewers, you might be asking, you might be telling me right now, it's like, well, I'm entitled to my opinion, uh, I'm a hip-hop head, I know what I'm talking about. Um, whereas uh, I, I disagree with the notion that you're entitled to your opinion, and uh, I'll draw your attention to those two quotes, uh, which I'll read verbatim now. So the first, um, perhaps you've heard or even said it yourself, maybe head off an argument or bring one to a close. Well, as soon as you walk into this room, it's no longer true. You are not entitled to your opinion. You are only entitled to what you can argue for. And the second, a quote from H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, um, I am disillusioned enough to know that no man's opinion on any subject is worth a damn unless backed up with enough genuine information to make him really know what he's talking about. So these quotes go to uh, the idea of a generalist versus a specialist point of view or perspective. For instance, um, again, I'm, I'm a very big Canada's fan, um, and so I think for the, for the past couple of years, I've probably listened primarily to Cannabis' material, whether it be through his albums, freestyles, collaborations, or through uh, the mixes done by the fans, including my own. Um, so, uh, so I feel that I have a, a very different perspective than someone from uh, who listens to more mainstream hip hop music, or so, or for someone who maybe listens to Cannabis' only his older material, or, or whatever. So, um, so as a fan of, of the hip-hop culture, if I really wanted to kind of get into the catalog of another artist, uh, say Nas, for instance, so, like, again, don't get me wrong, I've listened to Nas' albums, fantastic, but if I really want to kind of get into the catalog, so not just the albums, but his features, the freestyles, the unreleased material, um, I'd, I'd, I'd want to go to, to a diehard Nas fan, and I have done this before, um, my old roommate is, uh, was a diehard Nas fan, so we'd often have some really great discussions uh, on these topics. And I, I try to get it from that person's point of view, again, what makes the artist special in their eyes, or what makes them great, um, at least, or what, uh, what leads you to, uh, to call that artist your favorite artist, and what, like, so, like, why are they so ill, essentially. Um, so when it comes to general like reviews, I don't put too much stock in them because I'm not sure how well the reviewer 
understands Canvas's material. So and this is kind of very complex in some respects in terms of the, the impact that reviews have um, in terms of dictating um, kind of the, uh, I, I guess, how an album is perceived uh, by the culture as a whole. So, uh, so again, so I guess with my dissatisfaction with, uh, with a lot of the existing reviews have kind of led me to kind of to put forward my perspectives to give everyone, um, I guess, uh, a better understanding of, of why, well, at least in my opinion, what makes this album so great. And, and I feel my opinion holds more weight than some of those reviewers because I've taken the time to, to go through the catalog to, to understand what's, what's being said, to, at least to the best of my knowledge. Um, and for instance, again, like there's the, the incorporation of esoteric elements in Canada's material. Any, any Canada's fan would tell you that. Um, and that's defined as opinions, beliefs understood by a small group of those specifically initiated or rare or unusual interests. So for me, um, at, le at, least f at least what I feel most strongly talking about, um, you'll be hearing from someone with kind of first-hand experience um, in the art of infinite mixing through Poet Laureate Infinity. So, uh, so, um, so I think that this will really kind of come through in part three uh, of, of my series, but, um, but in general, or in, I guess in, in a lot of cases, those who choose to, to uh, mix Canada's as music are often some of his biggest fans um, because they've taken the time to, to kind of go through the Poet Laureate Infinity lyrics, all, all 1,000 bars, take the time to chop up the lyrics, chop up the couplets, um, and to rearrange them and create new songs to kind of help uh, help expand the catalog and kind of and keep it going. So, um, so um, but conversely, um, I guess... Uh, I guess the understanding or the discussion on ancient or occult knowledge will not be heavily covered here. Um, it's something that I, that I personally kind of really dip my toe into um, and kind of have uh, a very basic understanding, at least enough to, uh, to, to grasp what's being talked about some of the time. I think, I'm sure there are rippers out there who are uh, much more qualified than I am to really talk about these things. So while, while I will touch upon some of it, because you, you, has, you have to um, when talking about this album, uh, I'm not going to go into too much depth about it, because I don't want it to be accused of providing any disinformation or to kind of really present myself as, a, as an authority on the subject, because that's just simply not the case. So, and uh, I guess uh, another reason why uh, I'm choosing to, to uh, talk to you today about this is to demonstrate um, constant support and to help kind of bring these discussions into wider discourse. And uh, I'll draw your attention to that, uh, to the image at the bottom there. That's the, uh, the back credits to Cannabis's Lyrical Law album in 2011. So uh, in the lead up to that album, um, uh, Cannabis and uh, the architect, they were asking for, for donations to, to help... Uh, uh, to help fund the album and and also to uh, uh, for for giveaways, T-shirts, posters, things of that matter. So uh, so I decided to to donate more than that more than what was being asked for. So um, in the lead of the album, got an email from from the art architect stating that I guess they decided to to do away with uh, the shirts and posters this time around, but they had a, a special surprise uh, for those who chose to to donate a bit more than was asked. And uh, and to to my to my surprise. Um, they included uh, my name and the name of another individual on the back credits to, to personally thank us for our support. And uh, uh, this was actually a really big, uh, I guess, a big wake-up call for me when it came to kind of figuring out or kind of determining how to support uh, my favorite artist, because not every artist would do this for their fans. Um, to show their appreciation of this matter, to include their name um, forever on, on, on a cannabis release, like, to me, like, they didn't have to do this, and uh, so it was really touching for me as a fan to be recognized in this manner. So from kind of that point forward, I, I wanted to to kind of represent or to um, show my appreciation in, in a different manner than what I was doing previously. So that's kind of what's uh, leading me to uh, to do uh, pro undertake projects such as this presentation and to mix in general. Like that's kind of one of the reasons why I got into that, and uh, I'll talk a bit more about that. Uh, Later on as well, so um, so uh, and I guess a, a few kind of quotes that, that I kind of pulled to help uh, kind of help demonstrate this this kind of more mindset. Uh, the first there being from the um, Cannabis's October twenty third freestyle of classic pack and lead up to the See True Hollywood Stories album. 
um, you know, that I ain't play in no games. Better believe that the album drops October 23rd. October 23rd. Okay, so you know where I'm going at there. And uh, just that quote, again, country singers live, live different. Their fans got more commitment. They get bigger shipments. Big difference. It's a big business. They, ah, sorry. It's a big business, and we can learn something. Why would you want to rap forever and earn nothing? So this is kind of something that Candace has spoken on for a while now in terms of, uh, just in terms of how, how, how not just his fans, but how hip-hop fans in general kind of are very divisive, are divisive in terms of uh, the artists they support and are willing to kind of put down another artist just to, to make sure that their artist kind of gets, gets more recognition or more higher billing. And that's kind of really counterproductive in a lot of ways. So, um, and, you, and you see this in not just in, uh, in hip-hop, but in, in sports in general. Like, uh, I'm, a, I'm a diehard Toronto Maple Leafs fan, and uh, my team is uh, the butt of uh, many jokes, uh, for good reason, uh, a lot of the time. So, but, uh, but through, out, out of it, uh, I, I kind of hold uh, the concept of one team is, uh, is, is very, very true to me. Uh, like, so no matter how, how much uh, they shoot themselves in the foot, or how much they're they're constantly rebuilding, or poor decisions by management. Uh, I'm going to stick with my team no matter what, uh, even if it's in the playoffs and uh, my team's not in it. I'm not going to choose a second team to support um, to kind of maintain interest. No, I'll just I'm going to stick with my team, and uh, and then I, I made that decision, and uh, I'm going to stick by it. So, kind of those, those are kind of like the. the the main reasons why I'm doing this, uh, to kind of, yeah, to build upon the existing reviews and to kind of demonstrate constant support for, for my favorite artist, um, and to hopefully, I guess, uh, inspire other, uh, other rippers to kind of, uh, kind of show their, uh, show their appreciation or interest in this sort of way, because I feel it's a lot more productive than, um, than going online and getting into kind of fruitless discussions, um, about kind of subjective matters that really don't get us anywhere. So, um, so without further, further ado, uh, I'll present this disclaimer. So just uh, to note that the views and opinions expressed in each presentation uh, represent those of the author and do not reflect the official policy or position of Cannabis and his team. And uh, I reserve the right to adjust my personal stance based on the attainment of new knowledge, information, and facts pertinent to the information contained within. Um, so also be aware that there might be some casual swearing um, or cursing. Um, so please, uh, if you're offended by that, uh, I apologize. But um, but uh, it may slip out uh, every now and again. And also, uh, I'll try to speak as clearly as possible. I do have, again. I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I do have a tendency to speak uh, rather quickly. So uh, I'll try to slow myself down uh, when when I can. So so to start part one, the the, the time flies uh, theme. Um, I want to draw your attention to this passage from uh, it's the My Club outro from Cannabis's 2002 album, uh, My Club: The Curriculum. Um, so, uh, this is a favorite short saying of mine, two famous lines, time flies, especially when you listen to rhymes, the words become time and time is disguised around the world in 80 seconds through a sentence experience is the mother of all adventure. Who knows the unknown? Where will you end up? Question yourself who, when, and what I tell you this much. It's up to every one of you learn from the past or the future will punish you. Power flows to those who remember. Memory comes from words. Words come from letters. This is my club's primary premise. We tell history. We don't let history tell us, my club. So, as you can see, the, the phrase time flies uh, obviously has a uh, significant meaning to cannabis. And I think this passage in itself is kind of a, a very, very concise introduction to emceeing in a lot of ways, just in terms of the, the, the role that time and space uh, plays into emceeing. So I wanted to just to bring that to your attention from, from the outset. Um, so going to the tracks themselves, so I'm going to start with, uh, with the second track, um, Mikey Destruction, Devastating Tito, and DJ Slice. So um, the first thing to note regarding the, the Time Flies theme is that each artist has been representing hip-hop since the 1980s. Um, Mikey D, uh, of the pictures there, center left with the headband, um, part of the group Sensational Five, the Clientel Brothers, L.A. Posse, uh, main source for their second album, and is also a su successful solo artist. And uh, more recently, uh, he founded a new group titled uh, Elements of Hip Hop. Um, and uh, so uh, 
and also, I guess, uh, Devastating Tito, and the picture on the bottom right there. Uh, it's part of the group Fearless Four, the first crew signed to a major label, um, and also kind of played a role in starting Team Fearless and Ironclad Entertainment. So, and actually in that picture himself, uh, he's, on the other half of that that's kind of cut, cut out is, uh, is Rock Him Allah. So, so you can see, you notice that, that he has, uh, that these artists, they have, uh, they, they, while well, they represent a traditional facet of hip hop culture, they're also very kind of ingrained in their own respective communities. Um, Mikey D, for instance, uh, um, he, he, uh, I guess him and LL Cool J have, uh, have had a very close relationship and, uh, I guess they had a bit of a falling out when LL became um, the, the su success that, that he did, or that he has uh, become uh, to this day. And I guess more recently, uh, they've kind of had a, a reconciliation. And uh, I think kind of that, that aspect alone, kind of in relation to the recent reconciliation between Cannabis and LL at the, the, the Brooklyn show, the Barclays Center, I think that's kind of a, a nice kind of layer to this track. Um, and I think the fact that having... Uh, these two featured MCs, and also DJ Slice um, on it as well, who uh, has done a lot of work with with Cool Rock J, um, and uh, I think it goes against the trend to feature kind of the latest IT MC or to kind of establish a new sound. So, and uh, also I, I want to bring attention to the production on this track by by Scamadix. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but uh, it's kind of one of the only tracks on the album that's not produced by Bronze Nazareth. And kind of has it's very reminiscent to, think, to me of the late '80s, kind of very baseline driven, and the hi hats are heavily featured. Like it's, it sounds like something like it right out of a Rock Him album. Um, and uh, so I think, in a lot of ways, I think the track kind of educates new hip hoppers to a piece of the culture's history and an intended purpose, and kind of shows the disconnect between then and now. Maybe not necessarily in the track itself, but for those who are involved, kind of what each art artist represents and kind of what they stand for. Um, and so I thought that was kind of really neat and kind of, it, it makes this track a kind of a favorite of mine on the album. So, um, going to, uh, to the next track, um, which is, uh, Cannabis's Autobiography Part 1. So, again, if, if, if you don't know already, Cannabis, aka Rip the Jacker, Poet Laureate, Javelin Fangs, Beast from the East, Caesar Germanicus, etc., um, in total, he's over 20 releases. Uh, Time Flies Like Ice Phoenix Rise is his 16th solo album, um, plus uh, a number of collaborations and mixtapes, and uh, of course, uh, a quote from Harry Fox Hates Hip Hop, how many songs he wrote, bus. I wrote 1,500, Ask Cap, Don't Lie About the Numbers. So of those releases, it doesn't include the, the countless uh, freestyles and features that he's done, often for, uh, for new and emerging artists. Um, not just uh, kind of uh, established names in the game, but uh, but Cannabis is willing to kind of collaborate with anyone um, who uh, who represents hip hop and, uh, and and really brings it to the table. So um, so an autobiography in itself it's, it's a personal history that preserves life stories by interviewing or recording stories onto CDs. So even just recording music, you're you're, you're recording your life story and is an autobiography or audio biography. So, um, and the first thing that kind of really stood out to me was, I guess, the, the, the uh, Jay-Z intro, where he comments on Cannabis's integrity, um, and integrity is the, the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles, and, uh, and I, I just included the quote there, I'm gonna let the world know the truth, which is the, the opening to the to second round knockout, and the truth is kind of uh, something that's really, um, that's really important to, to Cannabis as an artist and as, a, as, as an individual. Um, and seeing that, again, from, from second round to some of the material released around See True Hollywood Stories, to even more recently when, uh, when uh, he was imploring DJ Premier to tell the truth uh, regarding their experience recording uh, the golden terror of rap. And in fact, I guess the, the truth, <laughs> um, I know it seems silly to say, but I think just telling the truth uh, would, uh, would would solve a lot of the problems that we face nowadays. And uh, I know you hear people say, uh, when you tell the truth, uh, you kind of take a big weight off your shoulders or off your chest. And uh, I think that that's kind of more significant in, in more ways than one, if you know what I mean. So, anywho, moving on. 
Um, in this track, there's, uh, there's strong parallels between Cannabis and Paul Allen, and so uh, uh, on, on the, uh, the album cover, you'll see that the, the invitation to, to Paul Allen's party, which is what this is uh, talking about, uh, it's kind of great front and center. So in, I think in some of the research that I've done, um, kind of in the lead-up to the album about Paul Allen, just to kind of see what was kind of behind it, I found uh, there's kind of a lot of, a lot of similarities or parallels between this and Paul Allen, and uh, I think, in, as I wrote uh, on the text there, Allen is kind of described as the technical vision uh, behind Microsoft compared to Bill Gates' marketing savvy, and, uh, and if, if, you, if you listen to any of Cannabis of the Tiro, you know he's a, a very stout uh, representative of, of the more technical facets of, of, uh, of hip-hop music in terms of how he composes his lyrics. Um, and also, uh, not just, like, like music aside, I guess Paul Allen is also kind of a, a well-known introvert, um, much like this himself, and for me, I'm also a self-described uh, introvert, so there's kind of, that was interesting to, to read about, uh, just in terms of how they, how they approach social situations and things of that nature. But, um, but going back to kind of the, the, the Time Flies theme, um, I think uh, this, this track is, again, very representative of it because it's Cannabis talking about his own history. Again, no one can tell it but him. Uh, I'm going to do my best to try it here, but, uh, but you know what I mean. So, um, so I guess, as other people have remarked, like, the beat itself is very, kind of, very fitting for kind of a storytelling song, and there's references in the song to his the time working with the Lost Boys and Group Home Entertainment, and uh, and then also um, and also his experiences with Mike Tyson, which uh, are always brought up uh, when when people speak of cannabis. So uh, um, so I think in total, like like the song, it kind of really demonstrates that cannabis's career is much more than the established narratives lead you to believe. Um, if I were to go online to any kind of general hip-hop news outlet and were to type in uh, cannabis in the search engine, I'd probably return with a paragraph about, uh, about second-round knockout, um, perhaps maybe the Eminem feud and also the notepad incident. But, uh, but it's just, again, like the, the track kind of helps shows that there is much more to his career than that what, what people talk about. Um, and, uh, and, I, and I found it interesting that this song in particular, kind of ends circa 2005, when there's much more to be said, including the creation of Poet Laureate Infinity in 2007, for whom the beat tolls, and then kind of everything that's come since then. And uh, and, if, and as we all know, there's the the audio biography is, is still being uh, is still being written, written to this day, and uh, and, uh, and and I'm thankful for that as well. As, as the more music, the better. So uh, so so keep it coming. And I guess just one more thing I, I want to point out just about this track, it just an it, interesting kind of factoid, and just, uh, again, Can I Bust the Album is certified gold, um, so Cannabis has sold records uh, for, uh, for uh, just so you know, and uh, the global population in 1998 was under 6 billion people, whereas now, 2015, it's approximately 7.3 billion people, so there's uh, 1.3 more billion people on this earth yet hip-hop sales are, have declined greatly. Um, so I, I know part of that's uh, due to technology and everything, but I think it's just interesting just to point out nonetheless that, uh, again, it went gold at a time where, yes, people were buying more albums, but at the same time, there are many, much more people now uh, who consume music than there were back then. So I, I just thought that was interesting to bring up. So moving on to, to the first interlude featuring Classic Pack. So if you don't know Classic Pack, um, he's a New York MC and producer. Um, he's rocked with cannabis uh, on and off since 2001 and the See True Hollywood Stories era. Um, he's produced and featured a collection of tracks off the second disc of Lyrical Law, uh, released in 2011. And he played a key role in orchestrating the Cannabis LL reunion at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. So uh, again, I know uh, Classic Pack is not everyone's uh, cup of tea. But um, but I always respect about how he represents cannabis uh, uh, unabashedly and, uh, and and supports his brother um, throughout all these years um, and uh, and I, th I thought the the interlude was kind of a, a very w good way to add some gravitas to the album and uh, kind of really kind of pumped me up for for what was to come so so I was happy to see uh, classic back on there not just in the interlude but in one of the bonus tracks too and you can see on the the bottom right of the of the slide how just kind of a, a selection of, uh, of, of Classic Pack's uh, tracks with cannabis, and uh, so you can check them out if you have time. But, um, 
But overall, again, in terms of the, the time flies theme, again, this is, uh, I guess, one of the first examples of Cannabis kind of reaching into his own kind of personal past, his, his kind of history as an artist, for, for someone to kind of be featured on the album. And as we'll see in the, in the coming slides, that's, that's a theme that's very uh, repetitive, uh, you could say. Um, so going on to the next track, um, Bronze Horses, uh, featuring Killer Priest. So Killer Priest... Uh, one quarter of the supergroup, the Horsemen, uh, is the Death Horse. Um, a lot of you are familiar with the uh, the legendary um, battle between the Heralds of Extreme Metaphors, so Cannabis and his rhyming partner uh, CI or Webb, um, and they battled the Wu Tang Clan in Atlanta during the mid '90s. And so the legend goes that uh, that uh, Cannabis and Webb um, were uh, were winning the battle, uh, kind of going through each member of, of the clan. Um, until Priest was brought into Anchor, and uh, it goes that he spit his uh, heavy mental verse a cappella, which essentially obliterates everything in its path. Um, and from that point forward, kind of there's a good established base of respect, and uh, and I guess uh, Killer Priest and Cannabis have been kind of frequent collaborator collaborators, um, especially since uh, 2000 BC, uh, Cannabis the second album, and then also s uh, subsequently on Horseman tracks and each other's albums. So, and uh, also what I, what I dug up was uh, um, from, I think, um, an interview on Conspiracy Worldwide Radio, which uh, I'll talk a bit more about in part three, uh, or sorry, part two, um, uh, just a quote from M80 um, that, uh, about how he described Cannabis and Killer Priest kind of being each other's favorite MCs. So the quote is, uh, I know that Priest and Biss have a bond that is far deeper than music. They're mutually each other's favorite artists. So as I kind of said just before with the uh, with regard to Classic Pack, I guess this is another example of, of this reaching into his past for, for features on the album. Um, and as I did previously, there's kind of a, a select track listing there of, of uh, songs with Cannabis and Killer Priest on them. So definitely check those out if you haven't already. Um, moving on to uh, to the next track, uh, The King Sent For Me, the Samurai Riders remix, uh, featuring Raekwon, uh, Corrupt, Craig G, and Bronze Nazareth on the hook. So I guess, uh, just to start with, I'll just say that this is actually one of my favorite songs on the album. Uh, it's a very soulful sounding beat, and I'm a sucker for, for a nice organ, um, kind of dating back to my old ska and reggae days. Um, and, uh, and I think kind of the track relates to kind of all three perspectives under the Time Flies theme. So the first, again, this reaches into kind of into his past or features, and kind of all three featured MCs kind of harken back to, to the golden era and its focus on kind of hard beats and lyricism. And, uh, and lastly, um, it kind of, it provides, uh, a good example, kind of looking to hip hop's elder statesman, statesman, kind of for guidance and kind of returning to kind of, uh, to the roots or kind of how to get back to kind of that golden age and kind of get back to that energy that kind of really made hip hop so special. So, so kind of just spending some time on each of the featured MCs, uh, I think, I believe this is the, the first collaboration between Raekwon and Cannabis. Uh, someone could please feel free to correct me in the, in the comments. But uh, as far as I know, this is kind of the, the first time that they've both been on the same track. And uh, I know Cannabis has, uh, has a strong appreciation for, uh, for Raekwon. And as uh, the quote on Hip Hop's Top Brass there, uh, Raekwon and Tony Starks each or both showed me how to throw darts. And uh, if I recall correctly, I remember seeing the photos that Raekwon was backstage at the, the Miss LL reunion in Brooklyn, in Brooklyn, so perhaps kind of that's where the uh, kind of the seeds were planted for this feature. So, uh, so regardless, it was, it was really nice to see the, the chef do his thing on, on the track, and uh, I was glad he was on it. So secondly, uh, Corrupt, uh, again, uh, one quarter of the supergroup The Horsemen, uh, known as Famine, and he first appeared with Cannabis on the Lost Boys' uh, Music Makes Me High remix, um, you know, uh, the combination Mr. Cheeks, Cannabis, and Corrupt is enough to make the wheels on cassette tapes bust. And uh, there's the, the quote there that in one of my source mag magazines, uh, um, that Corrupt uh, said that, again, me and Cannabis linked because uh, we like crushing MCs. That's my assassin assassination partner. So, so again, the, these two go back a, a long ways um, and, uh, and have getting re recorded a, a number of tracks with one another. So... Um, so finally, um, Craig Chi, uh, member of the Juice Crew, um, I think no more needs to be said, but he uh, also has the, the second verse on the symphony, so uh, if, if you haven't heard that before, um, I feel sorry for you. Um, and uh, just one thing I wanted to point out was his intro to his album, uh, Ramblings of an Angry Old Man. Um, just to quote again, I prefer to stick to the foundation of hip-hop, uh, sorry, I prefer to stick to the foundation that hip-hop was built on, hard beats and lyrics, which is something that Cannabis is, has stood for and tried to uh, try to propagate uh, through through his career. So, 
So again, I mentioned that this was one of my uh, favorite uh, tracks on the album. So I just want to kind of take it take a second to kind of look more at Cannabis's verse in detail because it is one of my favorite verses on the album. Um, just the areas in bold again. Uh, women are for fucking, men are for fighting. Who cares as long as they both bend over smiling? Um, personally, uh, I, I like this line because to me uh, it reads as kind of a, a statement um, against violence against women. Um, in terms of they both bend over smiling. Uh, if you're if you're if you're, uh, you're you're fighting another man, it's kind of it's good respect to uh, to bow before your opponent before a battle. If there's if you're in a competition, that there's established rules and regulations in place uh, to make sure that uh, that both fighters are kept safe and uh, and kind of you're really kind of displaying the uh, the athletic part of it. Uh, um, and also, as we've seen uh, more recently with. Uh, uh, specifically in uh, in sports in the NFL with uh, with violence against women, it's kind of a, a good reminder that uh, that if, at least if you ask me, you, sh- you shouldn't hit women under any circumstances. So uh, so I so I kind of like that line from that perspective. And then also uh, the, the uh, kind of leading the the truth to power gunpowder plaid lumberjack flak jackets and cowboy trousers. Uh, the cowboy trousers I thought was really interesting just because if you go back to watch the uh, the video for the symphony, um, it it's takes takes place in a saloon. So I, I, I again don't know if that was done on purpose, but uh, but I thought that was really neat. Um, and also uh, the gasoline soaked mimosas, ocean spray gray goose dolphins. Um, gasoline soaked mimosas. Uh, well, alcohol in itself, if you, if you ferment it for a certain amount of time, it turns into uh, it turns into a fuel like ethanol. So essentially, if you think about it, uh, any beer, wine, alcohol product can be used for uh, for another means, not just to get drunk on, but to, to, as an energy source. And uh, ocean spray gray goose for golfing, dolphins, not golfins, dolphins. Um, as we've seen kind of also more recently when it comes to, uh, to oil spills and things like that and, uh, plant and marine life getting affected, um, by, uh, um, by, uh, again, by oil and gas and kind of the, these pollutants and everything. I, I, just to, at least for me specifically, that this kind of, this line has a, has a kind of a, a strong meaning and, and it resonates strongly with me as someone with kind of a history working in the bioeconomy too. So, so I, I just wanted to kind of uh, bring that to everyone's attention. So, um, moving on to the next track, uh, one that uh, I'll spend a bit, bit more time on, um, it's Battle Buddies for Life featuring disasters. So, um, by the time this project is, is released, and by the time I finally get get around to uh, to recording it, um, it'll be three years since uh, since the battle, and it still kind of cap- captivates hip hop fans to the state across all fan bases, uh, myself included. Um, I was uh, I was lucky enough to be able to to attend the battle in person. Um, I'd spend I'd spent over a thousand dollars when it came to flight round trip, accommodations, tickets to the event. Um, and some spending money, um, so I, I made the trip uh, from up north to down to Cali to, to witness it in person. And if you asked me if, if if I'd do it again, ten times out of ten, of course, uh, it was great to to witness some history and see the Ripper do his thing. So um, so in terms of uh, time flies, just uh, again, just I, I think it's it doesn't need to be said, but I will anyhow. Again, again, three years by the time it's been released, and in terms where previously, Canvas was kind of reaching into his past. Uh, his, his own kind of past catalog or his past history for features. This is a uh, disaster, someone that's kind of had a, a big impact on his career kind of more recently. And um, and I think regardless of, of how you view the battle, uh, whether or not you feel uh, cannabis lost on purpose or how everything went down, I think you cannot argue that cannabis' participation in the battle undeniably raised the profile of organized battle rap leagues and brought more established veterans to the competition. I, I think that's unquestionable, or you, you, you can't question that. Um, so, but for the track itself, um, again, redemption is, is a main goal, and that's really evident uh, kind of in the, the middle vocal sample. You know, make it right for yourself. You lost that fight for all the wrong reasons. You lost your edge. Um, so, a, a, as others have pointed out, like, redemption is kind of a, a real kind of, uh, real key, key kind of uh, concept kind of keep in mind when it comes to this track. And uh, something that uh, that DJ Karma Infinite brought up, that I'd like to shout him out for us, is that the idea that the, the Rocky Apollo roles can and have been reversed. So Cannabis was like Rocky in the, in the first match of Rocky Three, kind of going into it with a few personal factors, like uh, the injury to a shoulder and all that uh, all that jazz. 
um, and the fact that there a lot of interest kind of could be could be generated um, in in a rematch, much like again in Rocky Three, and then then maybe more so or less so in, in Rocky Six. But uh, the kind of the ending vocal sample kind of leads you to believe that kind of, that kind of cannabis is done with it, like he doesn't want anything to do with it. Um, and uh, even after the battle itself, um, where uh, one of the vocal samples is like, I didn't want to even want to see my children or anything like that. And something that I, that I highly respect that after the battle, cannabis kind of took the time to he, uh, gave people dab. I got to dab myself. That was really big of them. And kind of took photos, shook hands, kind of put, put on a good face, even though that's probably the last place he wanted to be at that time. But, uh, um, but there was uh, the big crowd of people looking to meet him. And in fact, um, kind of that uh, the, the picture on the top left there kind of harks back to one of my clue mixes um, off Mausoleum. Yo, I want to be a part. Give us all a jump start. Imitate art. Acupuncture heart with an abo dart. Behold the beast. I have to show how it's done. I'm the one behind the one in 21 and 1. So that photo was taken as we were kind of all being all kind of filling outside. And uh, I remember it specifically because I saw the cameraman going to take a picture. And personally, I, I hate having my picture taken. So, uh, so as it was going, I, I turned to the left, and uh, so that, that's kind of why I'm kind of I'm I'm not facing the camera right there. But um, but just when I saw that kind of the photo post online, it was just kind of it was a bit surreal to me. Just because after the battle, I was able to shake Disaster's hand too, and he actually recognized me from uh, from a video that I posted. Um, before the battle, um, truthfully, I wasn't in the in, in the right state of mind uh, when uh, when I filmed it. But um, but that's that's a story for another day. But just kind of how how that all came together, and then plus seeing the this picture after the fact, um, it was kind of very uh, at, le at least very un unique and kind of touching for me in some respects. So so I'll, I'll just say this again: if, if cannabis feels that he's uh, that he's done with battling and uh, isn't interested in kind of battling disaster again, uh, even though some people are still calling for it, that uh, um, that I guess uh, disaster. If you're listening to this, um, I guess when you win your uh, KOTD title back, uh, if you want to give a true unknown a shot at the belt, um, drop me a line. I'll, I'd be more than interested to uh, to, to to rep uh, rep the Rippers and and take you on. Um, and as as a Toronto native, you know, I, I think it would have kind of some extra significance. Um, and uh, as, I, as I said in my uh, spatial arrangement mix, uh, you know, you heard what I say, Blue Jay, concentrate, before I start earthquakes, better pontificate, op orders, where to drop, rip the robot, because I know Captain Coots is the king of the dot. So, uh, so I mean that, I, I mean that, right? So, like, it's, uh, so yeah, as I said, if you wanted to give a, a true unknown a shot at the belt, you know who to look to, and uh, I'll give you a run for your scully. So, um, um, so finally... Uh, the last uh, last track for this uh, for this part of the presentation, uh, Concourse P um, from Pete Rock. So Pete Rock, um, ill DJ, MC um, from from Bronx, New York. You see, I got got the uh, the picture on the bottom right there, of the Grand Concourse um, in New York. So um, so what I really like about this track is that uh, it kind of it really marks the change in how we produce or consume hip hop music. Um, Pete Rock says it in, himself in, in his verse, like, Pete Rock the Desperado used to push the hard top Milano, keep a trunk full of vinyl, now it's all about Serato, laptop, scratch box, 745, knock the camera on Novato. So, again, we started out uh, with turntables, and now we've gone to more electronic, kind of computer-based DJ equipment, and even in terms of how we consume music, um, for, from vinyl records, cassette tapes, compact discs, MP3s, and now a lot of streaming. And I think this is important because the amount of data that can fit on each medium affects the song length. Um, so, like, again, like 20, 30 years ago, artists really had to kind of tailor their songs to, to the medium that, that the song was being released on. So if you're, you're releasing it on a vinyl record and you wanted to get it kind of fit as much, as much songs on there as possible, a lot of tracks were maybe two, three minutes long, uh, whereas nowadays um, you can... Essentially, you can make a track as long as you want, and uh, I think this also ties into the infinity concept, which uh, I'll be talking more about in part three. But in the fact that uh, with with the internet, there's kind of an infinite amount of space when it comes to uh, to data, and uh, so you can really it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of how you how you want to construct your songs and how you want to compose your music. So I thought that was kind of really neat, something I wanted to, to bring to the table. So, um, and also, uh, there are a lot of references to, to acetate, 
um, in this track, so or, or a lot of references to vinyl. So, for for instance, again, crates of hardware. The acetate bombardier is, still, is in Skipper's chair, visibility clear. And also, who can handle it? Largest vinyl collection on the planet. Sonically sample it, electronically scan it, and stamp it. And then pick a pe pick any piece of acetate, and watch Pete pick a gold plate out the crate. Transform Serato to Mercy Alago, DJ Mia Moretti, and Caitlin Moe, Fast and Furious Go, Fast or Slow. So, acetate disc, um, it's, it's a bit different from an ordinary vinyl record, but it's uh, used as a means of evaluating a tape to the disc transfer or cutting the final master disc. And uh, kind of to summarize, I think it is just kind of really neat in some respects because the production and acquisition of vinyl records has really re-emerged as a trend in recent years, uh, especially among amongst uh, people my age. So kind of in the kind of like the, the mid twenties, um, everyone I know seems to have a, a record player nowadays and are uh, are obsessed with kind of collecting vinyl records. So it's uh, kind of a, a nice little throwback to uh, uh, to kind of the seventies and eighties there. So so yeah. Um, so to summarize uh, part one, um, again, this is kind of the table that I kind of referenced earlier, kind of have the, each perspective on the one side and then uh, the theme on the other side. So in terms of the Time Flies theme from Canada's perspective, um, as I said before, this, this term has great meaning for Canada's dating back to my club, the curriculum. And these series of tracks demonstrate that there is more Canada's career than current narratives lead you to believe. And I think each feature can be kind of interpreted as having a role in hip-hop's development, the golden age, or Canada's storied career. So in regards to hip-hop, I think the opening track shows that the separation between hip-hop's kind of original purpose kind of compared to what it is prominent today. Um, and I think uh, cannabis' impact on the exposure and growth of battle rap, it, it can't be denied. And uh, the way that hip-hop is produced has changed substantially since, uh, since the hip-hop's conception. Um, and more so, just uh, on a more global uh, global spectrum, the way we, that we can consume music across all genres has shifted greatly as, as technology has developed. And then finally, that specialized knowledge and understanding is kind of really being underscored in favor of generalist takes on the most recent or hot proceedings in any, in any avenue of entertainment. And, and this really kind of dilutes the discussion and debate and kind of uh, can really, ha it really has an impact in kind of diverting the, the conversation to kind of less important factors than things that really need to be discussed. So, uh, so as I said from the outset, that's kind of part of my, one of my goals in kind of undertaking this project. So, uh, so with that, um, I hope you've enjoyed uh, part one of uh, the Time Flies, Life Dies, Phoenix Rise PowerPoint project. Um, please uh, look out for, for part two, Life Dies, and uh, you can kind of reach me on Twitter at Captain Coots. Uh, I don't go on there too often, but uh, I can see myself being more active as, uh, as, as time goes on and kind of momentum starts to build towards the next kind of series of cannabis releases. Um, I have kind of my SoundCloud information there. You can check all of my uh, all of my mixes on there. And if you want, subscribe to my YouTube channel just for uh, uh, for more. Uh, I, I post my mixes on there too. And in the future, I could see myself doing more of these type of videos uh, just to kind of help clear some of the or help clear and change some of the narratives uh, uh, regarding cannabis to, to help build support for uh, for the artists themselves. So, uh, so thank you for listening and uh, and stay tuned for part two. All right, peace, rippers.